Aloha! Hey, it's Julie Zemlis, 365 Hawaii, and uh, Keller Williams, uh, Big Island, uh, part of the 365 Hawaii team with Eric Zemlis, who's behind the camera. And I am here today with Amber Haley from Real Broker, and she and I are actually sitting in Volcano. Right? Yes. And why, why are we sitting in Volcano, Amber? We are in Volcano because uh, Tutu Pele decided to visit today. So <laughs> at, I believe, like, 4.40 a.m. 4.44. 4.44 a.m. this morning, uh, lava and an eruption returned to the crater here in Volcano. So we, we decided are. to come from yep. where the action is. Right. So get this. We're going to be doing this update with Amber. And then Eric and I got a room here at the Kilauea Lodge. And we are going to go into the park and we're going to film the eruption tonight. So you guys can like watch that on 365 Hawaii. Uh, and Amber is going to watch part of it and then come back at the crack of dawn tomorrow morning as well. So we're going to we're gonna do crack of dawn tomorrow too. And we're going to hopefully meet up maybe and do some kind of like a little fun little crack of dawn, you know, eruption experience. And this is what you do when you live on Hawaii Island. This is what you do. And to be honest, I, I meet a lot of people even here who like aren't tourists or even tourists who don't come to Volcano and it blows my mind because to me there is nothing more magnificent than a, an eruption. It's so special, like the energy that you feel, the excitement. I just think it's such a once in a lifetime thing and we're so lucky we live here. We get to like do it <laughs> oh my, once in a lifetime. Over. This is like the fifth time I know, it's, it's I know. erupted. <laughs> because we decide to, we like to seize life here. That's right. Yes, and also um, one thing too is that uh, you got a chance to see the Mauna Loa eruption, right? I did. Yeah, so okay, so not only did we have the Mauna Loa eruption, what was that like in December? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right, December. Yeah. And I think that uh, uh, Kilauea went off again. Okay, so Kilauea was kind of like uh, on her down spiral down when Mauna Loa went off. Mm -hmm. So I think that we were here filming back in like in November when this went off. Yeah. So now this is going to be fresh and fun for 2023, but it never gets old. It never gets old. And what I love about all the eruptions, I've, I've visited a, a lot of different ones over the years since I've been coming to Big Island and since I've lived on Big Island. And every experience I've had has been really different. Ah, which is which yeah. is cool. Sometimes uh, there's a lot going on. Sometimes there's not a lot. It just even the crater. Even if you go to the same spot on the crater, I mean, it looked so, so different. different years ago. Yeah. Um, and Mauna Loa, of course, was a totally different kind of eruption. I've seen Kilauea erupt. I mean, not only in neighborhoods, but into the ocean, <laughs> Mauna, Mauna Loa, yeah. down its slopes. Mm -hmm. This one's like a lava lake, if you picture like a crater lava lake. So they're all really, really different. It's mm -hmm. very exciting. Yes, and the good news is, you guys, don't be all freaking out that all of a sudden, oh, oh, Big Island is a bad place to buy real estate, because it's, right now, the eruption is in Halimau Mau Crater, and nobody's getting hurt. There's no lava coming out to hurt private property this time. So it's actually a very safe eruption. And um, if you come to visit right now, what the best thing is is to come at night and see the glow. I call mm -hmm. it the world's largest campfire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like if we were in front of the eruption right now, you probably wouldn't see that much in the background. I'm no. guessing. We haven't been up to the crater yet today. Yeah. But maybe some like smoke the and, and, going and on. stuff like that. Yeah. But yes, the show really comes alive at night. And my yeah. favorite time, I was telling her earlier, my favorite time to come is like 1 a.m., 2 oh, a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because there's less people and it's right. just like... And it's quiet and you can get reverent about mm -hmm. how the power of life is creating itself right here in this park. Um, seriously, if, if any of you guys are actually spiritually connected to this island, if you're not out there watching the, the the eruption and right now it's fountaining and that adds to that like you know magnificence of life being created or uh, you know uh, earth really being created um, and what they're saying is is that this eruption might actually start to actually fill the crater floor now and so wow. before it had come up so much since uh, it really it went all down in 2018 2018 and then it kind of filled up over the last two years and they're thinking this one might actually even keep it going up even higher and the cool thing about that here's a little tip for you guys when the volcano is not going off you can actually walk down a trail called byron's ledge trail and it actually takes you to the floor of Halley Mountain Oak crater so you could actually walk down and actually stand on the caldera crater floor I mean, it's so epic. It is. It's so <laughs> epic. We're just so, so lucky. So for all of our naturalists, geophysical people, whatever the heck, this is like a, an amazing experience to be here. But um, is it going to affect real estate? Probably not. But what is going to affect real estate is Amber telling us about it. So let's talk about the numbers. Yes. <laughs> and okay, I love to just... I talk about this a lot, Julie. Is this... We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Because what happened in 2018 is, you know, the crater 
filled with lava and then it mm. drained and then all that lava had to go somewhere and it you know erupted it starting in leilani estates in a neighborhood so we don't really know but yes right now it looks fine. like a very a very safe thing and um a lot of times too if, if you're watching this maybe from the mainland and you've maybe never been to big island or you just aren't that familiar with volcano a lot of times if it's, this makes like national news they just it's like way blown out of proportion sometimes and this is the time i don't know if you ever get this from from main people on the mainland or different parts of the world where they start calling me like oh are you okay like yeah. safe? <laughs> Do you know check There's like no our option. safety is is okay like it's not that type of thing yeah. um but lava does always always affect real estate to, to some degree degree so it's not always that people are having to evacuate their homes and losing their homes and nobody will land on this but there is always an element of lava hazard affecting um, different buying real estate on different parts of the island and right. everywhere on this island um, you might not be aware uh, the, everything is in a lava hazard zone it just depends on like how risky so right, one right. through nine uh, and I'll tell you too because since we're sitting in volcano um, volcano this little town Never has anything happened to it when the volcano erupts. When the volcano was okay, okay, I will say that they had ten thousand earthquakes. Lots of in earthquakes. 2018. Lots of earthquakes. But it, the the amount of structural damage was absolutely minimal. Yeah. And also, when the volcano is going off, the air quality here is spectacular. It's blue skies. So it's so weird that the volcano when it goes. And then I'm telling you guys, being in Kona, when we heard the volcano was going off today, I went out and took video of the skyline because the VOG does roll over to Kona. So that yes. if you want to talk about affecting real estate prices, if you have um, lung problems, you know, like mm -hmm. breathing issues and um, things like particulate matter that happens with VOG is an issue that, that affects you if you don't want to live in Kona because you can't breathe very well. But there's um, Hilo that has beautiful air quality and East Hawaii where yeah. like, it, it's so funny because it, it, it's happening here, but it shifts over to Kona and people behind us in HPP and Puna and all the way up to Hilo have beautiful blue skies. Yeah, it is. Um, it is really interesting how th where we are right now. Not only is it way less risky, like if you were to buy a house like right here, right here, in um, Village. it's not very risky, and your air quality is really good, even though proximity we're so <laughs> yeah, close, so close. <laughs> to the crater. And then yeah, the air quality in Puna is like some of the finest on earth, even during the, <laughs> the nastiest. It's so not fair. <laughs> and it goes yeah. over I'm just thinking of those million dollar houses over in West Hawaii with that bog yeah. <laughs> yes. well, our, our view is like definitely the, the view uh, yeah. is affected definitely yeah. but we're here to update you guys on the real estate market so we're let's get into some numbers this is the numbers okay so we're gonna talk about the Puna district, which when we talk about East Hawaii, um, it's just south of Hilo. It's a really, really busy real estate market. So a lot of you who are looking for maybe more space, more affordable housing on the big island, this is like the last frontier of that. And there is uh, a lot of property that's in risky lava zones, but there is some property that's in lava zone three as well. So it's a really good place to consider if you are looking for more affordable real estate. Right, and um, I, I had a gentleman call me recently. He didn't understand some of the lava zones. So when you say lava zone three, uh, just do a real quick like, so one and two are the risky lava zones. Yes. And three means that you can get insurance yes. and you have a less risk of having your house inundated with lava. Yes. So, so the prices of houses in three, four and five are usually a lot higher than one and two because of the lava risk. Yes, the land is just more valuable when you have uh, less risk for, for lava. So if you're buying property in lava zones one or two, um, so just it, it changes all the time. So depending on when you're watching this, potentially, if you find this video years later or months later, it could be different. But um, it can be harder or impossible to finance. So a lot of those properties go cash only, um, or you just need more cash. You need a different type of loan or a different lender. Not every, you know, different lenders can offer different programs and they have different kind of underwriters that take on different things. And then homeowner's insurance. Yeah. I mean, whether you get a mortgage or not, you know, you going to want homeowner's insurance, I'm assuming, if you're smart. So that can be affected. So sometimes, um, I know in 2018, there was a period of time they stopped issuing new policies. Right. Um, and it just can affect your ability and your cost, too. So you really got to consider that. Maybe your homeowner's insurance is going to be like double in Lava Zone 2 than it would be in 3. Mm -hmm. So Lava Zone 3 is kind of that magic number. Now, I'm not saying Lava Zone 3 is safe from lava. We don't know that but it is considered to be safer uh, by all of these factors that geologists mm -hmm. and, and what we what we know of and right. basically what matters to you guys is you know how that affects your real estate and your ability to purchase so right. lava zone three is kind of the magic number and in general i recommend 
um, unless you have a particular reason or you're just really priced out of Lava Zone 3, if you can afford Lava Zone 3, try and buy in Lava Zone 3. That's yeah. always my advice yeah. to my buyers. Yeah. Because you guys, seriously, and then we'll, you know, I think that, uh, er, er, I think Eric was telling me that um, in California, um, some of the insurance companies are not offering policies anymore because the, the forest fires. The fires. And so um, living, you guys, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah. Living on a Hawaii, you know, in Hawaii near a lava zone is like living next to a huge forest in California. Mm -hmm. And uh, you probably want to be the one surrounded by a solid uh, wall. Yeah. And uh, that's why it's lava zone three, because they believe that it does, due to past performance, it has a better opportunity of not being taken out again by a lava flow. Yeah. So I just want to like, make that clear because people do call and say, I see these beautiful houses in the Elani Estate. Beautiful houses. Beautiful houses. And why are they so cheap? Yes, when I was shopping for my house, even I fell in love with the house in Leilani Estates, and I wasn't even very worried about lava. Like it just wasn't super on my radar at that time, years and years ago. And I just didn't buy there because I just knew the the, the barriers with getting a mortgage and all of that stuff. So it wasn't an option. And now I'm so glad because that house might not be there because right. a they, lot they of homes were yeah. taken out. 16 so. uh, events opened up in that neighborhood yes. uh, like four years ago. So. Yes. Yeah. So, so we'll sorry, I, I'm having ADD. I give you back. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I love our tangents and hopefully you guys can enjoy them as well. <laughs> But we'll try and stay a little bit on track. Yeah. So the Puna district is, again, where a lot of that risky, riskier um, land is, but there is some Lava Zone 3 as well. So let's talk about median home value for what we saw uh, up and through last month, where we got a full month of data in the Puna district. It is $345,000. Um, that is still probably to a lot of you and to me, a very affordable price. Very affordable price for the state of Hawaii. So mm -hmm. that is why I honestly love working in East Hawaii. I love that it's more accessible for people, but it's it's just it's a it's such a beautiful place to live in. Three hundred forty-five thousand. That being said, three hundred forty-five thousand, you will be hard pressed to find anything in Lava Zone Three for right, that. So right. I'm going to be really upfront with that. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to, you know, when we just take all of this data, sometimes we got to break it down a little bit further than that. Right. So a lot of the Lava Zone 3 neighborhoods, you're going to be looking closer to 500 or higher. Okay. So just depending on the type of property, new right. construction, what shape it's in. Um, we have all kinds of different different homes here on the Big Island. It's not like a lot of other parts of the country where you go to one neighborhood and every house is very similar. We have stuff all over the map. But 345000 is the median home value in uh, Puna. So that is down a little bit from the previous month where it was 350,000. I mean, that's not a huge, it's not a huge difference, but it is lower. And then uh, this time last year, it was 380,000. Okay, so prices so, are coming down a little bit. That is down a little bit. Yeah. And that seems to be the trend that we have said um, for some different, some multiple updates now. Mm -hmm. uh, days on market for Puna, average days on market is 69. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a little bit more than last month where it was at 65 and quite a bit more than a year ago where it was at 47 days on market. Okay. So that's, you know, how long a house is sitting yeah. before, um, you know, it sells and stuff. So that kind of is a big indicator of like what's going on with the market, how fast things are moving right. and all of that. So that's something that we really like to pay attention to. Uh, so now let's talk about the South Hilo district. Um, I don't often throw in data in North Hilo because there's just very few home sales there. So mostly we talk about South Hilo, which is actually, if you've ever been to Hilo Town and Hilo proper, that's, that's technically the South Hilo district. So okay. basically Hilo. Um, so the median home value there is for single family home is 495,000 right now. So, you know, that's, is that, is that that's higher, that's yeah. higher than um, Puna. And that is actually up from yeah. where it was a month ago. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a month ago, there was only 14 single family home sales that closed in Hilo and tw 21 this month. So it's not a huge amount of data compared to Puna where we had 78 single family home sales closed last month and, and 71 the month before. Yep. So, you know, and any bit of outlying data, a house that sells for multi-millions and a house that sells for super cheap, you know, that can skew it a little bit when we don't have a huge data set. Right. But that did go up uh, a little bit. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, days on market didn't change very much either. We, 52 days on market is the average days on market last month right. in South Hilo. So that is down just one day from the month before, which is 53 days. So okay. it's, you know, not really 
that much of a difference for me to really draw any conclusions from. But a year ago, a year ago, it was only 17 days. 17 days, market. wow. Yeah. So that's a huge yeah, yeah. difference. But you know what I'll tell you? Um, the uh, We've been reading some different like national news stories. They call 2021 and 2022 unicorn markets hmm. because we're not going to see that again. Just because the interest rates were so low and people were throwing so much money in the housing market and not that scooping right up, right? You're not going to see that again. That is not a normal market. It it's wasn't not. a normal market. And uh, it's almost like uh, when people say, is there a crash? Well, no. Um, it's just coming back to a normalized market. Yeah. But we have lack of inventory. Mm -hmm. We're just keeping the prices up, but not that people are cooking and buying them off the market. And we have a bunch of houses. We don't, right? Yes. Yeah. I am still seeing what feels like pretty high prices, mm -hmm. um, especially for the more desirable homes. I'm finding a lot of more buyers who are coming to East Hawaii, especially those who are relocating, yeah. are looking for new construction. Yeah. And I'm still seeing new construction, yeah. like in neighborhoods like Hawaiian Paradise Park, the the asking price just being, you know, 700s, 800s, wow, which really? is really high um, compared to to what it's always traditionally been in those East Hawaii neighborhoods. 250. Yeah, <laughs> 250, 250. I remember when I was first licensed in the state of Hawaii. I used to do real estate in California. Um, when I first got licensed and, and started really, really learning those markets that I work in a lot right now, it was shocking to me to see anything over 400,000. And, and that was just, you know, maybe four years ago. Right. So, it, yeah, it's it's to a lot of us even that live there and have worked there, it, it still is a little shocking to me yeah. constantly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's not like, you know, we're seeing things decrease a little bit in Puna. I wouldn't say that there's like crazy deals out there by any means. Um, I still have encountered uh, multiple offers. I've still oh, okay. done a lot of back and forth negotiation, especially with new construction. Um, I think a lot of the, the builders are in a lot with their investment on property is kind of my guess because a lot of them just aren't budging very much yeah. on the pricing. And, because and they, they, it costs to do it, they build it, they mm -hmm. took a chance at it. Um, you know, um, one of our buyers um, bought their house for less than 500000 for a new um, house. Yeah. So when you're saying there's no deals, oh my God, no, there's deals. Yeah. You can get a brand new house. I mean, it's, all, it's all about perspective. It is <laughs> yeah. all about perspective. Well, okay. Just so you guys know that the median prices in, in West Hawaii just went to $1.3 million I for a single family that. house. So you can get a three bedroom, two bath house, brand new construction, HVP yes. okay. for less than $500,000. Yes. So to me, it's like, oh, whoa. And get this, you can like live within biking distance of the ocean mm -hmm. in, in East Hawaii. Really? Mm -hmm. And also, if you want to live closer to the ocean, that's where you see some of those bigger houses being built. You're paying more, but oh my gosh, you get a chance to like walk to the cliff and watch the sunrise and be in Hawaii. Yes. Yeah, it is. So yes, she is right. <laughs> and I will say too, a lot of my clients do relocate from the mainland in there and some really expensive markets there. So to them, they look at 600, 700, even $800,000 and they don't even blink at that because yeah. they're like, that is a deal. Yeah. So it is all a matter of perspective, perspective for <laughs> sure. And I've definitely um, had some homes go under contract at prices that, you know, I've even informed my clients, like, I feel like you're, you are paying a premium for this house. And, and they've been happy to because they they found what they want and yeah. it works with their relocation and the builder's not really willing to budge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they just want into a house. And, you know, compared to a lot of other places, you know, it is a really good good value. But, it, it, yeah, I'm, I am seeing some, some prices where I'm like, yeah. okay, yeah, I can't. There's not a lot of comparable sales still to, to support those prices. But. Yeah. But, you know, with the one of the things, if you want to talk about comparable sales, because I've been, I'm literally, I've been getting some phone calls from people saying this. Um, they're looking at Maui, they're looking at Kauai, mm -hmm. and they're looking at Oahu. Those are comparable sales. Those are million dollar homes to be anywhere on an island in Hawaii. Yes. So when they come here, they say, what's going on in East Hawaii where you can still get a house for $400,000? I'm like, oh, well, it's called Lava Zones. It's called Lava Zones, yes, right. I, I do get this all of the time and that's why I'm hoping to put out more educational content. I'm yeah. so glad, I'm always so happy when we talk about lava because I even have people, I have clients who are even realtors in the state of Hawaii that live on different islands that mm -hmm. are look, always looking at investing over here and since they do not know the big island, they actually like you know to work with me because I do know the big island. And they will send me properties, you know, a million dollars, oceanfront, and they, what do you think of this? This looks like a great opportunity and I, I'm like, I don't, 
I don't, that's not, you know, a million dollars in that neighborhood, in that lava zone. You know, you're thinking of the Oahu prices, but on, on Big Island, you know, just know, you know, you gotta look into insurance, like you got more of a risk, you got this. So there is, there is, there are reasons that, that it is, but it does create a lot of opportunity too. So yeah. it's very yeah. exciting to be yeah. able to find stuff for yeah. those prices. Yeah. And I, I had a guy who said, I have $250,000. I'm in buying Lava Zone too because that's what I can afford. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, if you can afford to lose $250,000 and live there for as long as you can, it's almost like leasing land. Yeah. <laughs> because you never know. You never know. That your house might be taken by a lava flow yeah. at some point. And you know, we could, obviously we're realtors, we could be telling you guys a bunch of lies. Mm -hmm. It's never gonna happen, don't worry about it, buy as much as you need, la la la. But one thing about Amber and myself and our 365 team is we tell you the truth. We tell you the truth and we are not volcanologists, but we know what we know that we don't know everything right and the reason and again, <laughs> but we do know that geologists yes. uh call lava zone one and two for a good reason yes so. and, and lava will everything that i've read is lava will flow again and i've actually yes. even read that it will probably flow again on every inch of this island at some point no. i don't know if that's true i don't know but you know not kahala if we're thinking in the context of a lifespan of a volcano yeah. that i'm who's to say i'm not to say i'm not yeah. an expert well it's funny you say because i think a lot of people don't realize that um Hualalai, which is in Kona. It's not a it's lot not of people extinct. don't think about that. It's not. It's not extinct. And so you never know. And uh, people like, you know, when, when Mauna Loa went off, my friends in South Kona were scared because they are in the path of a Mauna Loa eruption. Mm -hmm. And that goes off every 30 years. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it is interesting. And it can affect more than just real estate. It could cut off major highways yeah, that could affect yeah. people's commute. Yeah. And um, I was I was talking to Julie a little bit before we went live about um, when I took part in a documentary film that Hawaii News Now did um, post eruption mm -hmm. for the 2018 eruption. And what did happen to some people, a, a good amount of people there, was their properties were surrounded by lava. So they weren't taken out. So some of them ran into really dicey situations with their homeowners insurance because they, you know, the insurance was like, well, the house is still there, but mm. you can't access it yeah, because it's, it's like been surrounded by lava. It hasn't burned down or whatever their policy covered. So that was hard for a lot of people. And a lot of people had farms in there. That was their entire livelihood. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's different things like that to think about. Like maybe it won't take out your house, but it can greatly affect if your entire livelihood is farming or you know your ability to drive home yeah well like um saddle road almost got taken out yeah that would have affected everybody a lot of people but yeah, a lot of people east to west boots, even yeah so we all did the like little praying pele don't do that dance and it stopped a mile within the highway so <laughs> that's that shocked me i i said goodbye to saddle road like <laughs> wait but i was like okay this will be interesting uh i was surprised it didn't take out saddle road but it was yeah. it was actually very good for the whole island because yeah. that's very good saddle for road for those of you who don't have the context is like the main highway in between that goes from like Kona to Hilo it's like the fastest way across mm -hmm. it's between Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa um the two big volcanoes there and it, it's it's the route people use all of the time and yeah, it would yeah. greatly affect everybody's life if yeah that, that and uh, it went like every night it was like this crawling 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 so yeah so we're having a big obviously discussion about volcanoes and lava today just because right down the street there's an eruption but um if you guys have more questions about that um we can also provide um some usgs uh information maybe a little bit about uh, lava zones so yeah. people can get to uh, you can uh, do a little bit of research into lava zones uh we have um there's obviously websites dedicated to understanding lava zones so um we can go with that. But let me ask you a question. Um, with the interest rates and what's happening with the overall economy, uh, do you think that that is having a play on what's happening in East Hawaii? Yeah, I think, I mean, this is not just East Hawaii specific, but something that markets are seeing everywhere is we have an inventory problem because a lot of people, they don't want to leave their interest rate and sell their, even if they want to buy another house, a lot of people can't do that unless they sell and they're locked into this great interest rate and that's kind of where pe a lot of people are getting stuck yeah is like with the selling and the buying it just doesn't make sense for a lot of people to make that move um so that's something i i'm seeing a lot a lot of people are staying on the sidelines because of that they don't they don't really want to sell their house and then buy another house they don't want to put their house on the market where they have this great in mortgage and um not know you know what they're going to find in, in the slow inventory and what rate they're going to get you right. know and that really affects your 
your buying ability. I'm not a mathematician, so I'm not going to try and draw <laughs> these numbers, but, but you guys know how interest rates work. What it really comes down to for people is their monthly payment and right. what they can afford. And right. your, when your interest rate changes, with the type of house you can afford, that dollar amount of where we're looking, and that's why it's so important to talk to a lender before we get really going with the home search like yeah. that can really 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 affect right a right, huge right, difference right. So, in fact you know yeah. it's interesting that uh, you get a 2.2 .2 mortgage like they had in the day um, and you can live in your house for twelve hundred dollars a month and then it goes up to six point five and then all of a sudden it's costing you know like you know four thousand or whatever to live in your house it completely changes what kind of house you think you can afford right yeah and I think that people are still believing that if they wait long enough maybe the interest rates will come down mm -hmm. or that people will start to sell their house mm -hmm. or which I'm seeing across the country is they're hoping that developers continue to build more houses mm -hmm. because what's happening across the country is the fact that there's just not enough housing being built yeah and um, at least in HPP there are new houses I'm starting to drive around the, the island and we're seeing um, more land being cleared mm -hmm. um, but um, it's just it's there's there's only so much land on this island that are is going to be dedicated to housing mm -hmm. like uh, I did like a blog post a long time ago I think it's like 78% of the land on this island is dedicated to either a lava zone or like a like full-on like lava you're not gonna build on it a national park um, farmland um, and only like a little little bit is meant for residential housing yeah yeah so it's like it, 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 they, people say all over real estate um, it's not like they're they're making more land well on this island they are <laughs> <laughs> but you're not gonna live there <laughs> <laughs> that is a good point. It, in this island, we are making, well, not we, but Pele is making more land. Making more land. Kind of a fun fact that I'll just throw out to you guys because I get asked a lot by my clients. It's like, who, well, who owns that land? The state of Hawaii does yes, yes. It, any new land. And do you know off the top of your head, I can't remember how many acres were added to the big island in 2018. It was quite a few. It was a lot, Eric, do you remember? I forgot, I, over, over, it was like three square miles or something? Like three, three square, square miles. miles. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it was a lot, yeah, and, um, you know, we laugh and go, who would want to live on a lava spit, right? Well, there's people you in California who like live on a, lot, a, a lava spit. Um, yes, there it, are people who do, and even, um, Sea View Estates, have you been down to that neighborhood? Uh, it's a lava zone two neighborhood, uh, very beautiful, um, down in Lower Puna. And I believe it was built on, um, I might be wrong, so feel free to call me out if I'm wrong, but I'm gonna be close. Yeah, I believe it was built on a flow from like 1970, which is not that long ago. No, no. And it's pretty, we, people have put in landscaping, it looks pretty lush, like you'd really never know. And if you don't, if you're not paying attention, and you, and you wanted to go down and buy there, you, you might never realize the risk that you're taking on. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And just so you guys know too, because you know, <laughs> we like this stuff, is uh, Leilani Estates. It was built on a lava flow that was from like 1957, 58, which again, I was born in 65. And in, in, in the scope of like geologic time, yes. that's not that much time, but then again, it was inundated with another flow of lava in 2018. Yeah. So yeah. this does happen. That's why that you know we, we bring this up. And in fact, if you guys ever get a chance to go to Volcanoes National Park, um, you walk through part of the park and it has like a little note that says here, this was 1983, this was 1975, this was 1969. Yeah. And it's all the way through the whole, because it just keeps coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm not trying to dissuade you. I just want you guys to know what you're getting yourselves into when you're thinking about Lava Zone 1 and 2. So um, again, if you guys have more questions about uh, Lava Zones and the houses that are in the safe for Lava Zones, Amber Haley is your chick. Um, and also, um, if you guys want, like I said, we're going to put some information down below so you guys can see the, um, the zone maps so you can see kind of like a little bit more like that. But um, the, there's a layer that goes on the MLS that only realtors can see, I think. I'm not too sure on that one. So again, if you see a house that you love, call Amber. And yeah, if you're not sure. And it's really easy to not be sure. Especially yeah. if you're not. Even if you... I, I know a lot of people born and raised on this island who know the volcanoes really well that aren't really sure what lava zone certain houses are in so re reach out and ask and um oftentimes if the price looks too good to be true it's it can be due to the lava zone there you go <laughs> yeah. so um anything else in terms of uh this update do you have any other like little outliers or anything interesting that's coming up that you can imagine that's let's see what interesting is coming up i just have lava lava on the brain right now yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like excited to go to go see the crater and um i'm gonna be yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Send me a message if, if you guys have any questions, especially about lava, because I could talk about lava and real estate. Yeah. And, just and lava also, and real estate forever. there is some really good deals here in Volcano. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, Volcano is a really charming place to live. It's somewhere we haven't talked about that much. Mm -hmm. um, so Volcano, most of it is, is part of the Puna District. Um, and 
there is some Oops. affordable real estate here compared to other parts of the Big Island too. So it does have a different climate. That's not for everybody, but. Right, we're at 4,000 feet, I think right now. Yeah, it's nice and cool up here. Yeah, but I'm still wearing shorts, you know? So uh, I think with that, um, I think that we'll go and check out the park. And uh, if you guys are thinking about coming and visiting uh, Hawaii, uh, Eric and I always stay here at the Kilauea Lodge and uh, they give you little cups and uh, it's beautiful as you guys can see behind us. It has all the, the primordial ferns and the beautiful forest and uh, we love staying here and uh, it's only like two minutes to get into the park. So there's our yes. little plug for the, the beautiful lodge it's today. It's beautiful, the grounds are stunning. What yeah. a great place It's a beautiful to stay. place. So uh, we will wrap it up and we'll see you guys um, next, so July, we'll put a date out for the people who are in the Facebook group. Um, and if you are not on our private Facebook group where these wonderful people are could asking questions. I don't know if anyone's asking questions. Do you have any questions? There's people on, but we have no questions. Okay, no questions. Um, we answered everything. Yeah, I know. Ah! <laughs> so if you're on YouTube and you want to be part of the uh, insider crowd, go to 365hawaiiliving.com and join our Ohana. And it's for groups of people who have not found a real tree yet, who are looking for houses on this island. Uh, we have a beautiful hui in partnership of uh, realtors like Amber, who can help you with your home buying uh, needs and also um, any selling. We can do that too. So uh, 365 Hawaii Living. And uh, thank you, Amber, for joining us today. And we hope to see you guys next month. Aloha. Aloha.